to the Solidity Fundamentals course. I am Anjali and I will be your guide for this course. So in today's lesson, we are going to discuss about the variables, state variables versus local variables. So before starting with the state variables, let's first discuss the concept of variables. The concept of variables is same in all the programming languages. Variables are basically placeholders to store values. Variables in declared in solidity language are a little different in terms of state variables. Local variables concept is I think almost similar to other programming languages. But state variables are a speciality of solidity language because state variables are the ones which are stored on the blockchain itself. So let's have a look at this. So state variables are those variables which are permanently stored in contract storage. So they are actually declared at the contract level. These variables or the state variables are declared at the contract level, meaning that once you store this con contract, once you deploy this contract on the blockchain, these variables will also be saved on the blockchain and will remain on this blockchain forever. So they have stored permanently in the contract storage. Second, they are declared at contract level outside the functions. As I told you that these variables are declared at contract level because the scope of functions, the scope of variables defined inside the functions is limited to the functions itself. But since we need something global, something bit more permanent, that's why we declare these variables outside the functions at the contract level. So this uh, automatically answers the third point which says that since these variables they are stored on blockchain so they are expensive as they require gas fees. So that's why you have to be very careful as a solidity engineer or as a programmer you need to be very careful about the number of state variables you are using in your solidity code because it's always tempting to store all the information on chain but then that comes at a price. Because you know that saving anything on blockchain requires a lot of effort at the backstage and that's why a transaction fee or a gas fee is incurred by the person who is initiated the transaction. So if we are writing the smart contract, so as owners of these smart contracts, we have to pay a gas fee and the amount of gas which your smart contract uses depends on the number of state variables you have declared. It depends on other factors as well. But one of the very important factors is the number of state variables you have used in your contract. So since they are stored on the blockchain, they are more permanent. That's why they require gas fees. Now let's discuss about the visibility. So we are going to have a separate lesson on visibility after a few lessons. But just for now, that there, there are three types of visibility for state variables, public, private and internal. By default, state variables have internal visibility, which would mean, so let me explain you uh, with the help of an example. So in case you have declared a variable called as balance, as we were talking in the previous example, if you make that balance to be public, then that variable can be accessed by anyone outside the contract also. So anybody outside the contract also can check out the value of that variable, which is the balance. If you declare that uh, variable to be internal, then only the contracts members, that means the functions which are written inside the contract, or if any function any contract is deriving uh, from that contract so we'll be understanding the concept of inheritance and deriving a little later just for now any child contracts or the functions of the same contract so the internal people basically only those entities which are internal to that contract will will be able to access the value of balance and if you make it private then it's only the inside functions in that particular contract, not even the child contracts. So you remove the uh, scope from the child contract also. So only that particular contract, the functions of that contract that can access that value. This is the difference. So if you do not write public, private or inter internal in front of a variable, a state variable, then by default, it will be set as internal, which would mean that any function inside the contract or any child contract function can uh, access this value but no one in the public can access it directly or nobody outside the contract can access that value directly. Finally the initialization aspect so state variables actually can be initialized in three different ways. First is at the time of declaration itself so we are going to actually practically see all of this then you will understand it better but just for now 
initialization can be done at the time of declaration. So the moment you are declaring a variable, you can assign a value to it then and there itself. Or you can use a constructor and then you can use uh, set that value. What are constructors? We will be discussing that in detail in our upcoming lessons. But for now, constructors are functions which are called only once during the contract creation. So in that constructor also, you can assign the value for state variables. Third, you can declare a setter function, a simple function which is uh, so in which you can save, store the value or uh, set the value of those st uh, state variables. So all three methods, we will be implementing it today and we will be seeing the three different ways of initializing the state variables. Now, moving on to the local variables. Local variables, contrary to state variables, they are temporary variables which are stored in the memory since these variables are declared inside the functions. They are not contract level variables. They are actually declared inside the function. So their scope is limited to the function itself. Now, since all the function data is stored in the memory temporarily, so that means local variables are also temporarily in nature and they are not persistent. Since they are not persistent, since they are temporary and they are only used until the type of function execution, so they do not require any gas fee. And the visibility for local variables would be limited to the function. So there is no concept of uh, public private here since the visibility of a local variable is only defined inside the block in which it is defined. So in, so if it's a function uh, and uh, so if your balance is defined inside a function, so the balance will be only used in that function and outside you will not be able to use that variable. So its scope is basically internal to the function. Now the initialization part for local variables, you have two ways. Either you can uh, uh, basically initialize them at the time of declaration itself, as we've discussed with the concept of state variables as well, or you can do it after declaration. So basically everything is possible in case of local variables. There are only two possibilities. Either you can do it at the time of declaration or you can do it afterwards. And both of them are possible in the case of local variables. So now let's write our smart contract here. So I have written the license line in the Solidity version and I have mentioned the contract name. So first of all, let me write a state variable with the name cost name. And let me initialize it to Solidity. The moment I compile it, you can see a green tick over here. That means this is allowed. So uh, this means that we have declared a state variable and we have given a value Solidity to it. Now you see that by default, the visibility I have not marked it public. So in case I deploy it, let me show you. The moment I deploy it and you see here, you can see nothing over here. Why? Because by default, the visibility is internal for state variables. So it will not be visible over here. But in case I mark it public and now I compile it and redeploy it, now you can see this button over here. So now the uh, so now what happens is Solidity compiler on reading that this is public, it creates a function for this, so you can get the value of it. So becomes because it's public, it can be accessed from outside. Now if I click on course name, you can see that the string Solidity appears. So it has returned me the value. So you can declare it uh, at the time of you initialize it at the time of declaration, and this is one way of initializing a state variable, and it's allowed. But what is not allowed is you can't do anything like so you remove it from here and supposedly in next line, you want to change the value for course name. So if you want to do it like this, let me compile this and it is showing me an error that you expected identifier but got this, which means that this is not allowed. So this you can't do for state variables. You have to do it at the time of declaration itself or you can use a constructor as we've discussed. So in case you use a constructor, constructors are one-time functions called at the time of contract deployment. So here you can access course name and you can write solidity. And you see when I compile this, you can see a green tick over here. So this is allowed. Again, third way of doing it is using a function. So let me write a function, set name, mark it public so that we can view it. And that's it. And here again, I'm writing course name to be Solidity. And again, if I try to compile it, I can see an error. Let me see. I did not mark the wrong bracket, sorry. Yeah. 
So now you can see that uh, the function also is allowed. So we can uh, do it inside a function or constructor or we can uh, initialize it at the time of declaration. So these are the three ways. So that's it for state variables. Now look, let's look at a local variable concept. So let me uh, declare a function. Let me name it add, simple function, add function and make it public. I'll also have to write pure, which means I'm not reading or writing any of the state variables. So we will be discussing about this in our upcoming lessons. For now, just uh, forget about this. And u in unsigned integer is written like this u in a so we take one number to be 10 and we declare it initialize it at the time of declaration but for other local variable we just uh, declare it and we initialize it in the next line as 20 and we return a plus b okay so since we are returning here so we need to re add returns here so it is returning a unsigned integer okay now let me compile this and deploy this to show you so let me deploy this and so here the function because it was public so a button has been added let me click on add and it's giving me 30 which is the correct amount so this was allowed so local variables either at the time of uh, declaration or afterwards both are the ways with which you can do it but the scope is defined itself here only so you can't access a and b from outside so that's what you can see from here course name if i click on course name so here it's blank because you have not called the set name function now let me call the set name function and now if i again call the course name you see solidity so for the first time because course name was blank but the moment you click on the set name function, the, uh, the value is stored, but you see it's permanent. That's why when you again, you are calling course name, it appears, right? So that means uh, state variables are permanent in nature. So that's it for today's lesson. See you in the next one.